We're going to continue now with a, with a, with a part two of uh, talking about action reaction and learning how to sing with either one, whichever one you want to use. You can use them, see? Uh, one of the most famous ones is putting a hello in front of the attack. You especially hear it in the older Italian singers. Uh, they, they tend to preset a lot. So they go, hello. So the vocalist became hello, triple L. Hello. And when you do that, you feel how the triple L, especially, hello, sort of builds pressure up against your diaphragm. Now, what we're looking at today, though, is what's happening on the other end of this ladder I was talking about. I've got a ladder here with a front and a back or a top and a bottom, and I go, hello, and I feel pressure here, and of course, I very much know exactly where I said, hello. So what's happening at the other end? What if I identify the process behind me and keep the pressure that way? Let's say the, let's say the rib cage is squeezing like this, right? Well, am I squeezing and pushing air against here? That's one idea. Works for some people. The other is to keep the pressure of the breath against the back all the time while you're squeezing. And when it does, the pressure doesn't let up and it becomes very, very consistent in the emission. See? So we go, hello. I'm looking there behind me. La, la, la. And I can either maintain the pressure here or maintain the pressure, if you want to. I, I did a tape on compression. You can do uh, maintain the pressure by keeping the air against this, cl this closing uh, rib cage. Hello! But I keep the breath against it like that. I don't just squeeze the breath forward. See, so many of ways to, these ways work will work all right if they're balanced and correct. If I go, hello, now at the time I kept the breath against the chest. It's called really the Valsalv maneuver. It has a medical name. But I can also keep the pressure of breath against this moving rib cage. Hello. So some, some people uh, call that singing in and singing in reverse and sliding back and down. They have all these terms. Singing is inhaling because it feels like that you're going inward when you do that. So I'm going to take a big breath. So my rib cage will open way down low in my back. And my, I, my, I, I either pull my stomach in or let my belly go in. One or the other. Then I go, that time it went in by itself, see? Now I go, Hello, hello, hello. Anyway, you can sing all day like that. It doesn't cost you a thing. As Richard Tucker once said to me, see, the voice does nothing. The breath does everything. So if you're using your breath in a way that you create the energy that you need, if I can do this at age 83, by golly, you can do it at age 23 or 33 or 43 or maybe even 53 or 63. Who knows? The whole idea, if you can get the concept, you have all of that energy working for you. It means really wonderful to sing with energy instead of with effort. I don't want to pick up some heavy weight. No, I just want to get up in the morning and say, man, I feel good today. And that's the kind of energy that I want to use. See? So with this Valsalva maneuver is done like this. That's a medical uh, performance of it. it. You stop the breath by closing the throat. <sighs> and when you do that, you get a great big reaction way down here in your diaphragm. And singers have been using it for, well, just listen to the old-timey records. And they do it all the time. You're going to go, ah, ah, ah. And they put that, that mini grunt at the end of the phrases. Uh, I made a tape called uh, Cut-Offs Become Attacks because some of the singers attack there or use that breath stop. Literally, they even call it the breath stop. You go, and you hold it there, and that's when I, that's how I attack. If I do that, I don't need to go, or do something to get the attack going. So 
what we're talking about today is always the opposite end of whatever the process is, whatever, whatever our vocal uh, technique might be. Let's say I lean here. La, what's happening on the other end? Then I feel my ribs going like this. See? So a famous German mezzo-soprano named Christa Ludwig, and many of you know who that was, uh, always sang by leaning her breath between her shoulder blades. And she'd sing like that. La, la. If I do that, where does my resonance go? So now I can turn the ladder around, or I can look and say, what is the result of leaning back like that between my shoulder blades? None of this is ever in the nose unless I breathe wrong. If I breathe wrong, push my belly out, my resonance can fall down, hit me way down here in a, in a position that's simply too low. And it doesn't carry worth a darn. Everybody thinks that's focus. Focus is a terrible word, folks. You don't focus the sound. You focus the breath of anything by putting it somewhere. But you, the, 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 the throat has to be free. You know, uh, it, how do I how do I focus this? This way? So a lot of singers are yawning and opening their throats and then they try to make the voice go through a little hole. It's of course backwards. Absolutely backwards. Supposed to do this. Watch what what God decided would be the best way for human little humans when they're born to project their voices to get attention. Do you ever see a baby do this? Uh, no. They go. <laughs> see? So that's the whole idea is that you've got to, you've got to find out uh, what really works in big theaters over big orchestras. And of course, I've sung a lot of Wagner and stuff and some big variety roles and, and uh, Strauss and things. And you get a very, very thick orchestration. Uh, and it's uh, very, very often too low in the voice to be ideal. Unless you're a true Helen tenor, which I was not. Uh, but I sang a, what they called Jugendliche Held, youthful hero parts. And I never sang the big East like Tristan and Tannhäuser and Siegfried, both Siegfrieds. But let's say we're going to, we, we did, and I feel that like crazy. I can either do this with it or I can keep the pressure of the breath consciously against the, the, the closing uh, rib cage. Closer, and I, got, I sing against it. <laughs> While it's closing. See? Now, we did Valsalva Maneuver, and the Muller, the Muller Maneuver is the inward one that goes like this. <sighs> so, one that Franco Corelli used, and uh, Jerome Hines, and, and, and uh, Tabali used it a lot. <gasps> she used the short one, <gasps> called the Happy Surprise. Um, and, and the hiccup is a form of that. So you stop it, you don't sustain it. The sustained one is officially a Muller maneuver. And uh, uh, Corelli would demonstrate that in his master class. Someone said to him, you're always talking about the open throat. That is your throat open. He said like this. <sighs> and Jerome Mines did it and sang the match falling off for over 50 years, 55 years or something like that. Never had a vocal problem. The the uh, no, I'd sing I was I sang very directly in the Jerome Hines and the whole time I'm doing my aria he's sitting next to me over here and I hear uh, I said what is that accompaniment <laughs> what instrument is that good uh, and of course he had a huge voice so it was a great big <coughs> rattly noise but the point is if I do that and sing that way uh, no. I can look at the front now and say, what's happening in the front of my body as, as an opposite and equal reaction to this? Because that's going down my spine, absolutely. So look where the phonation is. So Corelli with his favorite, with his famous, uh, um, what they call it, behind the glottal stroke, you know, the way you teach behind the glottal stroke is, is to do a glottal stroke. Ah, 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 it's obviously horrible. So you go, ah, 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 All right, that's the same thing as this. Or Benny Minogili, Lally Volpe, and Carmen Mela singing, sliding back and down. Or Crystal Ludwig singing between her shoulder blades. Ah! 
Now, what we want to talk about today is what is its opposite and equal reaction. I can do that and absolutely, let's call it sing forward if I want to. I can look in the front of my body. If I go, I feel it right here. See? You can do it and see where you feel it. And all I do is maintain uh, the pressure of the breath, or the connection, I should say, the attachment of the breath as it's closing on me. And in this, in this sliding back and down technique, the front tends to close. And Ludwig, uh, particularly, used to collapse her chest like that when I was singing. I saw her see the, uh, I saw, heard her and saw her sing the immolation scene from Goethe Dämmerung in the Musikverein in Vienna. And she started off holding the music like this. And by the end of the piece, she was standing, she was standing like this. And she was, you could see her, but she sang every note. Every note was terrific. And she was a very, very solid, dependable singer who could sing both soprano and mezzo parts. She's by, by far the best Don Elvira I've ever heard in Don Giovanni and the best uh, Lady Macbeth I've ever heard. Uh, so there, there were certain parts that she did, uh, she simply did them better than everybody else. So sometimes a technique is very suitable for a particular uh, category or just maybe individual parts of, of repertoire. Right? So if we do this, uh, now what about something like in yoga, you do breath of fire. So I'm going to do breath of fire. If you can hear that. See? Now, where is the action and where is the reaction? You notice that everything I'm doing sort of has to do with the breathing. Have you noticed that? Everything I'm doing, that's all I heard when I was a student, uh, you know, over, over 60, 65 years ago, <laughs> whatever. Uh, all people talked about was breathing. Nobody talked about the passaggio or, the, or passing the voice or, or the soft palate or focus or all that stuff that all, was, all invented by people who never were singers. See? They're trying to teach the way they hear it, the voice. And uh, when you, you know, when you talk to someone like Richard Tucker, he says, see, the voice does nothing. The breath does everything. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even thinking about my voice, my sound. I'm thinking about my breathing all the time. If I go... <laughs> Which end of the ladder am I now using? Where's my mind? Where is it in its observations at its dictation? <laughs> Where am I telling my body to do the work? See, I'm sure not telling my voice to do the work. I don't want my voice to work. I don't want muscles up here. <laughs> you, do, you do work, you get muscles. I don't want them in my throat. I want any muscles that happen, and the ones I have, thank God, I want to get make sure that, that they are that they stay in good condition. See? Uh, uh, as you know, as long as possible. Who knows? Someday I'll keel over and, and that'll be the great loss. <laughs> well, anyway, we won't, worry, we won't worry about that too much. But that's, uh, they call that breath of fire in yoga because it really, if you ever feel tired, and we all feel tired sometimes, just do the breath of fire. You know, why do I have so much energy? And I do have more energy than, than most people. I really do. <laughs> I'm not bragging. I'm complaining sometimes because I don't sleep much either. <laughs> but, but the idea is that this kind of stuff, I did karate for years, for instance. If you do karate and all this stuff, you develop a kind of, they call it chi, as in tai chi, or ki, aikido. That word means, you know, a, a great field of energy. So we want to learn how to do some of these things. If I want to place my voice, interesting, Mario Domenico sang here, and he used to demonstrate like this. Oh, 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 eh, 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 eh. I asked him, man, doesn't that hurt your throat? He said, oh, no, no. He said, I never let the breath get higher than here. The breath stops right here. It never comes up here. He sang Otello 467 times and never had a vocal problem. Plus all the other monster repertoire, all the Aida's, Andrew Chenier, and all that stuff. So if I do this, I can certainly lean the breath there. Remember the miniature cough? I simply moved it from here up to here. 
So it is, it is a form of Valsalva maneuver, and it's to, secondary, it's a form of, of the miniature golf. It says you placed it here, instead of that, it's one of the chakras, by the way, in yoga, so it's supposed to be absolutely legitimate to use this chakra anytime you want to. In fact, the name of that chakra is the listening chakra. If I want you to listen to what I'm telling you today, I'm going to speak very much from this spot, because that makes you hear, and it opens my megaphone, see? But if I do that, what's happening at the other end of my air column? I have an air column. So that air column, way down here, my lower ribs are doing this. Caruso's famous bellows. He says you open the lower ribs. Uh, when you breathe, and they squeeze together when you sing. So I'm down here on this, on with the breath there, and I'm like this, right? And uh, I realize, now wait a minute, if I can maintain that connection of the breath, uh, can, it feels a little bit like, like pressure, that you give just enough pressure to maintain attachment to, this, to these moving walls back there. It feels like somebody's going, mm. but if I do that, then I can sing, you know, what, whatever. I can sing anything, probably, pretty much. Right? I mean, all I have to do is maintain the breath attachment. You can either hold do it right here, or you can do it at its other end. I know I'm getting a little, uh, you know, I'm getting a little repetitive here, but this is trying to brainwash the singers to make them take a look and see what's really going on down there. Now, let's say I want to use a speaking technique. I'm just going to talk now. See? So take a deep breath. Now, where's your speaking voice? Do you talk this way? Oh, you can't use it. You talk that like that? can't use that either. So the whole trouble with the speaking method is, and speech level singing and all that sort of thing, is it can work beautifully or it can be a disaster because you speak so incorrectly. So if you take a deep breath, way down behind you and your belly, sort of you draw your belly in and breathe way down below you right there and you go, and now when I talk, to be or not to be, that is the question. I can speak any way I now desire. I can talk like that there if I want to. I can talk like I'm from New York and you know, in the Bronx, you know. I can, talk, I can talk like I'm from Brooklyn. I can even talk like I'm from New Jersey. See? The idea is to set the, the voice free so you can make whatever effects you want to make. I mean, I sang rock and roll, I sang folk music, I sang, you know, you know theater music, you know, so I, just, I sang it all one time or another in my life, and uh, uh, I just loved the opera, I always tried to be an opera singer, and an opera, operatic tenor suited me just fine, but if I breathe, Oh, I'm gonna go down, down, I'll see you later, I'm sort of tired of staying home all the time. If I can get the breath right, I don't need to use my throat to do any of the funny stuff that people do with their throats, right? And you can understand me. Just because I'm doing nothing here, the phonation is sort of speech-sized and normal, see? So I go... To be or not to be, that is the question. Now is the window of our discontent. It doesn't matter what I want to say or in what language. I can sing in any language I want to that way. See? What do you do? But how do you do it? I take a breath, right? And the breath affects my throat and I speak within the throat I have left after a big breath. Now that's my throat that I have left after I didn't do this, I didn't yawn, I didn't go and raise my head. I'm not going to speak in some distorted way. Do you know anybody that talks like that? Look what they've had singers doing today with their soft palate. I'll be going, yeah, 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 yeah. who do you know it talks like that? Right? So we just want to speak normally, clearly, but normally, and I take a deep breath. 
I just speak normally. Why not? That is the speech level method. It works like a charm. And if you put breathing with it, you can use it in the alpha. You know, over big orchestras without microphones. If you don't breathe, you have to use microphones. That's all. Um, but it's a great technique. And uh, we, another one is to is this uh, so-called static diaphragm where you hold everything dead still right here. And you go, I'm going to freeze this. Ready? No. Now don't forget, by freezing this, I flex something. I flex the muscles from here to here. See? So I'm freezing. I'm not just letting it just plop out. I'm really holding it still. When I do that, the action, there's a lot of action right here. But what's happening at the other end? What's happening in my back? All of a sudden, I feel my whole back doing this. See? And then I keep the pressure of, of the breath against those walls that are closing in back there. See? La! And all I do is, do, I sort of, if you watch the really great singers, you can see them on YouTube. It's, it's amazing how you do not see anything move at all sometimes. Caruso has a film singing Vesti la Juve Voyage. You can't see any movement in the front. And Gidi, Gidi's like this, he puts his hands this way. And Tito Schipa goes like this, right? You watch these great singers and how, uh, you know, Cesare Siepi could run around all night uh, singing uh, uh, something like uh, Figaro or Don Giovanni. Never see him move his chest. Zinka Milanov, absolutely dead still. Greatest singer I ever heard. Fabulous. Leonard Warren was famous for it. He talked about it. He did that and he did a form of uh, resonance enhancement called the pre-sneeze. So if I do this, I get one reaction. If I do the pre sneeze, I get this. Where was the reaction to that, and what what happened? Because I made an action up here with my soft palate, up and forward. If I do that, what does it do to the rest of me and my insides? Got it. All right, so we'll carry on with this, and we're, we're maybe put a little uh, series together with these because they, they, they. You, I, I would like for very much the singers to to mess around with these till they find one they're happy with, and once you get one, oh man, you walk it, you're ready to sing. You're not, you have no fear at all anymore because you know exactly what's going on all the time. It really uh, depends so much on the original breath you take that is way down behind you, and you either allow your abdomen to be drawn in, or you, if it doesn't work, pull it in. As, as uh, Gali Kurchi said, glue your abdomen to your spine. <laughs> and she was quite a singer. Okay, we'll be back. <laughs>